Hello, my friends. Welcome to another video. I want to thank you for joining me today. So this painting here, I'm not sure if you remember it. I made it a few months or not months, a few weeks ago, and it was a swipe and I was not happy with the composition. So I had at that point told you all that I would save it and do a future video kind of change it a little bit. So I've come up with a plan here that I will explain in a minute. I need something that can make different size circles. So I'm just showing you some cookie cutters, a bowl, an actual circle stencil, a cup, anything that's round you can use to do this. My plan is to create a magical bubble piece. And to do that, I'm going to create a bunch of different size circles on the canvas and then um, we're going to do some whiting out, some blacking out. I had changed my mind halfway through. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll walk you through step by step how to achieve this look. And just keep in mind, you can do this with any type of an acrylic pour painting. There are so many ideas out there to do. Another fun idea for canvases that you really don't like but aren't bad enough to throw away is you can actually cut petals out of the actual canvas itself, like take it off of the frame, cut these beautiful colors up into petals and glue them onto a new canvas. I have a few videos on that and I will make sure to link them in the description. All right, so if you notice one thing about this design after it dried, it kind of went off to the side a little bit. So here's my plan. I have all of these little circles drawn. I'm gonna white out any area that is not inside of a circle. So I'm gonna white out the entire background. Then I'm gonna come in with some colored paint and create some, some circles that are behind these circles. All right, so we're gonna get kind of like a 3D thing going. But the design I'm gonna create is kind of gonna go up like this and off to one side and we're gonna have a negative space over here, okay? I'll show you the white that I use and love. This is the brand that I use when I wanna block something out, or if I wanna paint on a resin surface, I use this here, this brand, okay? So I wanted to show you something here. I am so careless, never squeeze paint out on top of your canvas. Did you see that? Let me show you again how close I came to squirting that all over the canvas. Always do it to the side. You know, sometimes I just do these these things and I just, I question myself all the time, trust me. It's, you know, I don't think before I move. <laughs> so here we go. I'm gonna white out this background. And as I said before, I decided to change it halfway through to black instead of white, but I wanted to leave these parts in just so you can see, you know, each step of the process and, you know, you just want to take your time with things and, and make sure that you're nice and neat about it. So today we're going to have a special guest and his name is Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson, during the making of this video, was quite the nuisance, <laughs> I'll tell you. Uh, I decided to leave this in here just so you could see in real life what I'm doing when I'm painting. I'm fighting off cats. <laughs> he just wanted to be up there with me, and this happened multiple times through the video, and it was just a cute little moment I wanted to share with you. Now, with that being said, if I'm working with resin or something like that, they're not allowed in the room or anywhere around, but, um, you know, just acrylic paint sitting at the kitchen table is okay. So yes, my cats jump up on the, <laughs> the kitchen table and I'm constantly fighting them anyway. So now you're seeing me again. I wanted to show you this step because it's important to see how I do it, but I did erase this. You'll see that in a minute, but I'm creating the circles that go behind the circles or the bubbles that go behind the bubbles. So you just kind of 
put the stencil or whatever you're using that's round on top of those other areas that are already bubbles and make sure you make the lines connect behind them. Uh, you don't want to draw, draw over your color bubbles. You want to make it look like they're going behind it. So at first I had chosen to do like this really colorful piece, but I don't know, maybe I wasn't in the mood and I just decided to switch directions. You know, sometimes that happens. It's just, you, you can't get into it. So you have to change. So I uh, did a few of these and then I just painted black over them anyway. But art in general is meant to be relaxing, therapeutic. So, you know, that extra painting time was extra time. I didn't have to stress about real life. So here we are with the black and I'm just going to cover up everything I just did except for the areas of the original canvas that are exposed. Now this original painting had been a bloom painting and when you do a bloom painting and use those thicker paints sometimes they dry textured so that's why the canvas where it's black looks ripply it's because it's just you know very textured but you don't see that in the end. So here again, I'm showing you, and you can see it much better this time anyway, so I'm glad I left it in, uh, how to draw the bubble behind the other bubbles. All right, so I'm going to let you watch the rest of these. Again, very self-explanatory. You can see here, I'm just using acrylic paint to paint in the circles. I'm going to be using some glitter to fill in those blue circles. And, um, you know... I'm just going to let you enjoy the video and I'll be back in a bit, but be sure to watch out for Mr. Jackson because here he is again. And while I was editing this video, his tail was doing something funny. So I decided to speed it up and <laughs> we're going to have a good laugh together now. There's one thing you should know about me. I'm a big kid at heart. And when I see things like this, it just cracks me up. I don't know why, but his tail, <laughs> it was just so funny. I had to speed it up for you. And it's almost like a whip cracking down on the canvas. Oh, I had such a fit, uh, good time laughing at that. It was just too much. But he was really into me painting and I was waiting for it. I was waiting for the paw to attack the paintbrush, but he was a good boy. He didn't do it. So he just sat there with me and watched me create this. And that's finally what I'm going to let you do too. What you do
All right, so now some just finishing touches. One more color of dots on this piece here. I love these new folk art dotting paints. They are the most fun. They can be addictive. You can go overboard with them very easily, but I love them. They come in all different colors. I'm going to put them in the description for you. They're a lot of fun to add to rocks, anything, a painting as you see here. So... What I did here was I outlined all of the bubbles with my white Posca marker, and then I took some paint. I'm going to create some shading, some little highlights. Um, the first thing I do is dip a brush into water. Then I kind of mix it through the paint color to kind of loosen it up and make it a little more transparent. I go around the, the top half edge so I go around it halfway around the bubble and then come back in with a dry brush and kind of just blend it and soften the line. And then I do the same with the color white on the bottom of the bubbles. Very, very simple to do. You're just looking to get a little hazy look of whatever color you're using. You should use white and then um, a color that kind of coordinates with whatever color you're working on. Like these bubbles had a lot of violet or deep purple in them. So I chose a quinacridone violet from Liquitex as my color to do that shading with. I realize this is a very busy painting and it's hard to kind of see what I'm doing here. But this bubble I'm working on right now is a good example of, you know, what I'm doing. You can see it well with the color that the bubble is. So once we finish this up on them, I'm going to add my resin. I was going to do the blue ones also, but I decided not to. I decided to leave those alone. So here we are with the white and I'm just doing the same thing. That brush is wet ahead of time. And I kind of just mush it into the paint, make sure it's loaded on the brush really good. And I go the upper half portion of the bubble, just along the outer edge. So what do you think about this painting? Did you like it? Did you have fun watching the video? Did you learn anything? Let me know in the comments below. Also, for those viewers that are new, uh, Canela Sirocco and myself will be in Charlotte, North Carolina this upcoming February. There's information in the description on that, along with um, how to get information on that class. We're going to have different Dutch pour classes. We're going to have uh, bloom classes. We're going to have resin classes. It's going to be a lot of fun. So in that description... What you will find is information on these products, on that class, on ways to follow me on social media. I'm going to start um, releasing some YouTube shorts, just quick little tutorial videos. So be on the lookout for those. And also my links to follow me on TikTok, Pinterest, Facebook. It's all in the description for you. Alrighty, my friends, last part here. I have some KS resin. It's the Liquid Art Elite Epoxy. It's the best of the best. I have it mixed up. I'm going to dump it on. We're going to pop the bubbles, and I'm going to show you how these bubbles here come to life. So when you pour it on, you just want to spread it around with your hand or a if you have a spreading tool. Make sure you're wearing gloves, obviously. And um, you want to check the surface to make sure there are no hairs or dust or particles of anything in there. Give it a good torch for, uh, I would torch it, let it sit five minutes, torch it again, 
let it sit another five minutes, torch it a third time, check the surface for your debris, and put it somewhere that is dust free. I have a baker's rack that has a cover over it, and I love it. Uh, I could put a link for that in the description for you guys, just in case you need a, a suggestion of something. But you can always find something cheaper, too, because those are pretty expensive. But I just love it. It's got, I think, 18 racks, and it's perfect for this type of art that you need to put away and let dry. So as you can see, I'm just spreading it out here. Don't let it go over the edge at some point and make sure you coat your sides. Very, very simple. There's nothing to be afraid of when using resin. I know a lot of people are intimidated because they know there's a work time on it. If you get a better brand like KS Resin, it's got a long working time, 45 minutes to an hour. They also sell a quick uh, cure resin, a fast cure called Liquidy Split. That will give you about 15 to 20 minutes of working time. And it's perfect for something like this where you're not trying to design with the resin. You're just trying to coat. And that one uh, in about four hours, you could take the tape off and look at your beautiful painting. Let us torch, and then I'll give you a close-up. Are you ready for a good time? <laughs> Here we go. Now pay attention to the painted area bubble area is there. Look at that. Absolutely pretty beautiful. <laughs> I think this is a really, really cute painting for like maybe a grandchild's room or a, even a living room. I mean, if you're into like almost planetary kind of vibes. Now these do shift color, but it's extremely light. See, so it's like a uh, abalone shell. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I love the primary elements and prism pour paints. You cannot get a look like that, which is regular to paints. That is so cool. Hot pink. Well, my friends, I want to thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, please click like. Please uh, subscribe if you're not already. And uh, don't forget to comment what you thought about this painting. Just something different to do, my friends. Here's the background. Whole lot of sparkle. And I used glow-in-the-dark powders from uh, Win Modern Art. Oh, look at that. That sparkle is gorgeous. Wow. I wanted to try something a little different. You know, that painting I had done was eh. So... I decided to do this and have some fun with dotting. Dotting is a lot of fun. So I'm going to put all the links in the description for you guys. And i uh, going to wish you a beautiful Sunday. But before I go, a certain camera hog wants to say something to you. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Why are you always causing problems? <laughs> Am I disturbing your peace? Huh? Say thank you for watching, everyone. We love you all and happy pouring.